So after last episode's... Whatever the hell that was, I think it's about time I did another movie with a decent budget that actually got a major release. So, what have we got up for today's episode? Friday on TBS, and the not-so-distant future. It's man. We're never gonna make it through this one. Versus machine, Gene Simmons. Kirstie Alley. Tom Selleck. Runaway, 805 Eastern, Friday on TBS. Ooh, 90s cable TV staple. Alright, guess it was a toss-up between this one and the Beastmaster, and I can always get to that one later. Runaway is a 1984 sci-fi movie written and directed by Michael Crichton, who most people probably know better as an author of novels like Congo, Sphere, and of course Jurassic Park. But Crichton also had extensive involvement in the film industry, having directed the original Westworld back in 1973, as well as other techno-thrillers like Coma and Looker. Runaway was Crichton's fifth feature film as writer-director, and the studio had high hopes it would be one of the major sci-fi releases of the year, but it ended up getting overshadowed by movies like The Terminator, Star Trek The Search for Spock, and 2010. Not that it really matters, since if you had cable TV in the 90s, this movie played a lot. I mean, it's where I first saw it. Okay, so we got a movie directed by one of the most successful sci-fi authors of all time. That's like if somebody on the level of Stephen King directed a movie, it... Uh, well, I'm sure this turned out better than that one. The movie doesn't specify a year, but you can still tell it's the future because it looks like they're powering up an Amiga 500. And just listen to that music. Yeah, we got Jerry Goldsmith doing his best John Carpenter impression. Anyway, our main character is Sergeant Ramsey, played by the man, the myth, the mustache, Tom Selleck. Ramsey specializes in taking care of runaways, which are robots that have malfunctioned and become a potential danger to people. Yeah, robots may be more advanced in this future, but cell phones still have some catching up to do. Ramsey's also been assigned a new partner, and hey, she's a lady. Hi, Jack Ramsey. Karen Thompson. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna go back and forth between calling you Tom Selleck for most of this video. Ramsey may be a little reluctant to work with his new partner, but he is still gonna slyly check out her ass. So anyway, what's their first runaway assignment? Oh shit, this robot's gone crazy and is killing bugs! Oh, wait, I guess they're supposed to do that. This must be the crazy one. Standard agricultural model 7799 pest controller. Any armament? Just a claw. It's only programmed to look for things smaller than an inch. Oh, better not let it near your dick then. BOOM! Jeez, they better stop this renegade robot before it spells out a curse word in the cornfield. This movie's rated PG-13 and they're only allowed a few of them. Yay! Wow. Okay, that was easy. Oh, my mistake. The robot's got some wacky hijinks programming. You know, considering how many Children of the Corn sequels there's been, I'm surprised none of them have had robots yet. Uh. Whoa. 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 World War III. Did they just die? Oh, never mind, they're fine. They just got some Looney Tunes blackface on them. Now that they've taken care of the robot, time to learn more about our characters. How's the vertigo? Yeah, I don't like heights at all in my life. Eh, don't worry about it, Ramsey. I'm sure that won't be important later in the movie. And in case you didn't catch that Ramsey has vertigo... A few years back, Jack was chasing this guy. This guy ran into a building that was under construction. Jack freaked out. Again, no big deal. I mean, what are the odds that's gonna happen again at the climax? Why do you do what you do? Oh, long story. I was gonna be a dancer, but I hurt my knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're mainly interested in Ramsey's vertigo, so unless you're gonna defeat the villain through dance at the end, we don't need any backstory from you. They get another runaway assignment, and considering how easy the first one was, this should be a piece of cake, right? What do you got, Jerry? Model 912, cut up two people inside the house. Wife and her sister. Bodies over here. Oh shit, looks like this family's Roomba went straight up Jack the Ripper on their asses. To make matters worse, there's still a baby inside and the news won't leave Ramsey alone. Well, the public has 
has a right to know. Not tonight. We got a 10-month-old baby in there. We don't know when or if the 912 is going to attack the child. But if it does, I'm sure you don't want a carved up baby on your network, do you? What? Hey, here at the Live Leak Network, we'll be the judge of that, okay? As easy as it is to make fun of the technology in this movie for being dated, I gotta give it this. It does pretty accurately predict drones, and they even use it for surveillance purposes. Too bad it doesn't last long. <laughs> You get an audio on that? Yeah, confirmed all three sounds as a 357 Magnum discharge. has got a gun. Well, that does it. There's only one thing that can stop a robot with a Magnum, and that's a Magnum P.I. He's going in. However, the dad does not seem happy about this. No television! No pictures! I won't be on television! No pictures! No television! What was his problem? I don't know. Maybe he's upset his whole family just got murdered by a killer robot. I mean, it's just a theory. Jesus, this news crew won't quit. They even follow Selleck inside the house. Hey, come on, man. This isn't RoboCops. Piss off, will ya? <laughs> I'm sure he got the shot. At least we finally have a malfunctioning robot worthy of bringing the police in. You'll never take me alive, copper. Oh, shit. Oh, well, there's your problem. Somebody set this thing to murder. Congratulations, Ramsey. You saved the kid. Unfortunately for the audience, Ramsey has his own kid he goes home to. I saw you on TV, too. But you didn't go in the house. How come the father ran away? Didn't he want to see his baby safe again? Hmm, if this kid didn't look so much like me when I was younger, I think I'd hate him a lot more. And the kid's not the only one who lives here. But Which is exactly anyway, one hour right? and 45 minutes past your bedtime. Oh, Lois. This is a weeknight. Eh, shut up and sing Happy Birthday Polly, you overgrown VCR. So, that's Lois. With all those phone calls, I thought Lois was your wife. Sometimes she thinks she is. And as soon as I get that new flashlight attachment, she will be. Do you have a wife? She died. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, I'm sure these two won't be love interests. Jeez, this future is so robot-obsessed, the only serial they have is C-3PO's. And again, while I'm busy making fun of the technology, this did also kind of predict tablet computers. God damn it, Michael Crichton, quit being so good at this. I'm trying to be snarky here. Hey, Dad. Would Lois ever go crazy like that other robot? No. Mmm, don't be so sure. If she gets jealous of you seeing Thompson and goes all fatal attraction on you, you might find a rabbit cooking for dinner one day. Speaking of crazy robots, it turns out somebody modified the killer robot from earlier with a black market chip. Oh, we got a dense bag. Floor! Floor! See, this is what happens when you overclock your robot incorrectly. Looks like they got another assignment. This time they got to deal with a construction robot that won't stop cat calling all the cars that drive by. Why the hell are there so many robots going haywire? This is Acme Robot Repairs. Acme? Jesus, no wonder the robots aren't working right. We got a call in the office that one of your 912s was not functioning and I'm... I don't know who this guy is. Ah, come on, Tom. Don't you recognize Axl Rose when you see him? Yes, that's Gene Simmons from Kiss playing the movie's villain, Luther. And I almost didn't recognize him since he's not dressed like this. Luther's developed a microchip that can cause robots to assassinate people while making it seem like a malfunction, and plans to sell the templates for him to the highest bidder. Now, just like in my Never Too Young to Die video, the easy thing to do here would be to just shit on Gene Simmons and say that he sucks. But again, when it comes to playing a sleazy villain... Valuable to whom? Oh, the Mafia, terrorist organizations, foreign agents, anyone who will offer me the most money. I said, drop your gun. I'm not kidding, asshole. Drop your gun. Eh, what can I say? He's pretty good at it. Come on, just look at this face. Are you telling me Gene Simmons can't play an effective sleazeball in a movie? He also ends up stiffing his partner for the chips. What? You mean Gene Simmons is cheap? Who could have seen that coming? And here's some more shit this guy probably didn't see coming. Ah! Yeah, anybody who's seen this before knows these spider robots are probably the most memorable thing about this movie. Well, well, actually, they might be the second most memorable, since Luther also has a gun that shoots a very special type of bullet. Wow, Luther has bullets that follow people around corners? He invented the cartoon bullets from Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Well, I guess it really does work for Acme. And that's how Kennedy really got assassinated. Is that him? 
Face was narrower. Oh, uh, here, let me help you out. Uh, yeah, there we go, that's the guy. Great, not only has Luther killed another person, but I think Ramsey might also have glaucoma. Retinal identification is now confirmed. That's a pretty good voice. What is it, 5590? Yeah, it's a 5590 processor, but with a Z77 phonetic ROM, gives it that lifelike tone. Again, I would make fun, but it does sound a hell of a lot better than this. Big money! Big prizes! I love it! In case anyone thought this didn't have enough 80s TV stars in it, here's Kirstie Alley getting terrorized by... I don't know, a Dalek photocopier or something. Oh, you know you just sit tight, Miss Rogers. She's very attractive. Of course she's attractive. It's 80s Kirstie Alley, not today Kirstie Alley. And now that she's in the movie, expect things to get funny. Y you better watch out for him. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Even though I added that laugh track, I think this part actually is turning into a sitcom. Are, are you all right, Sergeant? I'm fine. <laughs> All right, that's it. No tin can makes Tom Selleck look like an asshole and gets away with it. Yeah, that's right. R2-D's nuts, you robot fuck. Surprise, though. Jackie's actually an ex-girlfriend of Luther's and is supposed to deliver some chips to him. He said he would kill me if I didn't get him for him tonight. He said he would kill me just the way he killed Johnson and all the others. He's evil, I'm telling you. Yeah, we know he's evil. He's played by Gene Simmons. It's not hard to figure out. Jackie tells Ramsey what hotel Luther's staying at. And did I mention this movie's rated PG-13? Are you listening to me? Not even there. Yeah, that's right. This movie's got some PG-13 boobies in it. Ramsey shouldn't be surprised. If you go to Gene Simmons' hotel room, there's probably gonna be some groupies there. Also, hey, Anne-Marie Martin. I guess Crichton wanted to give his girlfriend a cameo here. Before they're able to arrest Luther, he escapes, I think by triggering the hotel's robo-fire alarm. Quick, to the kiss copter! Ramsey's not able to get Luther before he escapes, and it isn't because of his fear of heights. He just really needs to work on his cardio. Great, Luther got away, Thompson's been shot, and the chief is so mad he's become a movie stereotype. You screwed up good, Ramsey. We got two dead officers. Do you understand me, mister? Two dead cops. And we got two wounded, one of them your own partner. You're a loose cannon, the mayor's up my ass, I'd put you on suspension if you weren't such a darn good cop. You get the idea. And we got two dead guinea punks! Okay, I don't know what he really said there, but it clearly wasn't punks. But I'll tell you who's not censored. Look, I want tensile shields, I want blast pads, and I want to clear the fucking room now! Thompson has an unexploded magic bullet in her arm, and Ramsey decides to remove it himself rather than have Robot do it. Because as we all know, the best surgeons are police officers who don't use any special equipment. Come on, kid, breathe it. That's it. Just keep breathing. Hold still. That's it. Okay, just kidding. But we do still get an explosion. Now that he's saved Thompson's life, time for Ramsey to up his game. What do you say we have dinner tonight? Dinner? Yeah. I can't go to the restaurant like this. Well, we're going to my place. Yeah, that's right. Selleck wants to take Thompson on a mustache ride. Maybe we'll even ask Lois if she wants to join in. I really appreciate the gesture, but I think I'm gonna go home tonight. Why not dinner? Just forget it. Wow, a woman turned down 80s Tom Selleck? Damn, no wonder he looks so confused. Well, I got shot down, so grease up your outlet, Lois. I'm feeling lonely. Meanwhile, they find out that Luther's bullets are programmed to track a person's unique heat signature. You've heard of a bullet that has your name on it? Well, this one really does. Okay, so just cover yourself in mud and hopefully they won't work on you. Alright, I joke, but again, this whole smart bullet idea is actually pretty cool and memorable, even if it's not exactly practical or realistic. Despite having more info on Luther, the Chief still isn't happy with Ramsey. We've got his girlfriend. whoop de doo You think this guy's interested in a piece of ass? She's, well, he's played by Gene Simmons, so... Yeah, probably. Luther's so confident he's not gonna get caught, he even calls the police station. I watch, I look, I listen. I'm watching you now, I'm trying to trace this call, which won't do shit, because I'm calling from a mobile phone. Damn, everyone knows there's no way to track somebody's cell phone. Or see what Rule 34 art they were looking at. Hopefully. Luther wants the manufacturing templates to make more chips, and it's believed that Jackie has them in her possession. Why is he looking for you, Jackie? How do I know? 
Okay, guess that settles that. They plan to move Jackie to another facility, but first they gotta make sure Luther isn't spying on him. Bug detected. Give me your blouse, Jackie. Bug detected. Give me your bra. Resuming scan. Bug detected. Jesus, what is this? Strip surveillance? Oh, and don't expect to see anything here. The movie already used up its PG-13 titty quota in the hotel scene. You want the regular four-car escort? Nope, just you. We'll take this one with the robot driver. You ride shotgun. Robot driver, huh? Well, considering Luther causes robots to go crazy and kill people, I'm sure this will turn out fine. Also, since they have a robot driver in the front, does that mean Johnny Cabs exist in this universe, too? Luther's got some more tricks up his sleeve, though, like some tiny tiny exploding wedge robots. Okay, not quite as cool as the bug bots, but not bad. I don't blame Luther for using this design, though. Wedge robots were the most effective ones on battle bots. A lock on is targeted. One down. But not as effective as a laser. So if the bullets track heat, what are these things tracking? Multiple lock-ons targeted at less than 100 yards. Oh, uh, what? You checked her for bugs, but you didn't bother to check her purse? That's your own damn fault. Okay, you narrowly avoided getting blown up. Now time to get some sushi. Ramsey, let me speak to her, Ramsey. Where are you? You might say a night out on the town with your partner. Move a little deer so we can see the gun. Yeah, I think you can see that gun from space, Gene. Even though Luther seems to have the upper hand, Jackie only gives him half the templates and Ramsey puts a tracking device in him. Of course, getting the templates doesn't mean he's not gonna still be evil. <laughs> Well, on the plus side, this means Kirstie Alley won't have to do that humiliating reality show. And Luther still doesn't know he only has half the templates. These aren't all of them, Ramsey. Nobody does that to me. Nobody. Okay, that ploy didn't last long. Great, Luther managed to get away and completely ruin these people's night out. Good thing they planted that tracking device on him. Where is he? He's in the john. We're ready to go in. Oh, I guess you could say they caught Gene Simmons while he was dropping a... Uh, Deuce? You see, because Kiss has a song called Deuce and Gene Simmons was in... Whatever, never mind. No dice, though. Looks like Gene's already gone. He did, however, leave something nasty behind in the bathroom for the cops to find. <laughs> Again, whatever you think of the rest of this movie, you gotta love those spider bots. Luther also managed to get a cop uniform and a copy of Ramsey's eyeball. Not really sure how, but considering he can make bullets that go around corners, I probably shouldn't question this guy's competence. Nice one, Ramsey. Now Luther knows about your son, which means the little bastard is gonna get more screen time. And to top it all off, he also assaulted Lois. Lois? Bobby was on the phone when an extremely unpleasant man came in the back door. Ugh, now all I can think of is Gene Simmons shorting this thing out with his tongue. What'd you do with my son? You are a powerful and attractive man, sir. Yeah, I'm listening. And if you tell me where you live, I'll come over and kill you now. Luther tells Ramsey to bring him the rest of the templates if he wants his son back, and see if you can guess where he asks to meet. Well, it could be worse. At least Selleck didn't say he was afraid of spiders at the beginning. Then I have the templates this time, Ramsey. I do. All right, drop your gun. Not to worry. Selleck always keeps another firearm hidden in his mustache. Okay, keep it together, Ramsey. You just need to rescue your son and try not to throw up in front of Gene Simmons, okay? Surprisingly, Luther lets Bobby go, and judging by his face, I'm sure he's completely trustworthy. I can't have any witnesses. It's too messy. The spiders have been programmed to kill the first first person that comes out of the elevator. Well, this might seem harsh, but Luther's just getting rid of another annoying kid character. In my opinion, he's kind of the hero. Ever see him kill somebody, Ramsey? It's really impressive. Yeah, I've seen him kill people. Like I said, they're probably the most memorable thing about this movie. Unfortunately for Luther, the spiders have one weakness, a woman who knows how to climb in high heels. You bastard! Oh shit, Luther's armed his gun with facial hair seeking missiles. You better get the hell out of there, Ramsey.
All right, look, Ramsey, I know you're scared, but if you didn't want to be in a situation that involved heights, you shouldn't have telegraphed your phobia so hard at the beginning. Want to know a way to make the Tower of Terror at Disney World more exciting? Remove all the safety features and add killer spider robots. I gotta say, Ramsey's handling his phobia pretty well here. I think this would make even somebody who isn't afraid of heights crap their pants. Eventually, he takes care of the spiders and gets the elevator working again, so now it looks like he's home free. <laughs> Ugh, the worst part about this whole situation. I'm pretty sure that's also the face Gene Simmons makes right before he shows groupies his love gun. Not to worry though, Selleck's got this under control. Nobody kills his housekeeping robot and gets away with it. See you at the party, Luther! Damn, looks like Gene Simmons didn't program his robots to recognize him without his kiss makeup on. Okay, looks like everything's been wrapped up. But wait a second. 80s movie, villain appears dead, but the hero slowly wanders towards him to make sure. Careful. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. <laughs> All right, well, they hired Gene Simmons. I guess he had to show his tongue at some point. And so, Ramsey saves the day. And best of all, Bobby gets a hot new stepmom. Can they cook? Try me. Eh, even if she can't, you could always just replace Lois with Rosie. Despite seemingly having all the elements to be a hit, like a respected sci-fi author, director, and a big TV star in the lead role, Runaway was a disappointment at the box office, making less than $7 million against a budget of $8 million. Critics also gave it mostly lukewarm reviews, but like I said, it's managed to get a small following through cable TV showings in the 80s and 90s. Ah, 90s TBS. Would this show exist without you? Probably not. The mix of sci-fi, thriller, and police procedural doesn't always work, and there are some pretty obvious cliches here, like Tom Selleck telegraphing the climax by saying he's afraid of heights, and Gene Simmons coming back to life like he's Jason Voorhees. But the performances are mostly likable, and as always, Gene Simmons plays an effective slime ball. Like any sci-fi movie made decades ago, some of the technology here is definitely dated, but some of it is also weirdly prescient, and even the stuff that isn't realistic is still pretty inventive and memorable. It's definitely a flawed but still pretty interesting movie, especially when you play the game of seeing what technology came true and what didn't. But most of all, I'm glad that this movie showed Gene Simmons wearing a suit and tie instead of this. Well, it's all for now. Until next time! Assholes.